Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord bestow his spirit on them all. These are the words of Moses in our first reading, when he is asked to silence two members of the community who were somehow endowed with the Spirit, even though they had stayed home on the day when the Spirit was being given out. A bit of background might be helpful. Shortly before the passage we heard today, Moses had been complaining to God that he was feeling overworked and underappreciated. Thankfully, that never happens to us or anyone we know. God's response to Moses to lighten his load was to impart God's spirit on an additional 72 members of the community to allow them, in addition to Moses, to prophesy. It is important to keep in mind that the main task of a prophet was to persuade the people to follow God by keeping the commandments. If they were blessed with a mellifluous voice, they might sing, the precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Most of them weren't so blessed. So their method of persuasion was usually along the lines of keep the commandments and things will go well for you. Break the commandments and you will be punished. Because their understanding of this cause and effect relationship turned out to be pretty accurate, people came to believe that the prophets had the ability to predict the future. That is, they seemed to know when the people would be blessed or punished. In any event, two of the 72, Eldad and Medad, didn't make it to the ceremony that was to mark their induction into the ranks of the prophets. And yet, they seem to be blessed with the Spirit nonetheless, much to the chagrin of Joshua and those who had gone to the installation liturgy. Moses, on the other hand, was neither surprised nor jealous. He knew from personal experience that God often worked in surprising and non-traditional ways. Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord bestow his spirit on them all. Our gospel reading from Mark picks up on this theme while extending our gospel reading from last week. You might recall that last week the disciples were arguing among themselves about who was the greatest. The response of Jesus, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. This week, the disciples are out of sorts because someone is acting in the name of Jesus, even though Jesus had not specifically identified the person as a disciple. Jesus' response there is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Just as we should not be concerned with who is greatest, so too we should not be concerned with the motives of those who are doing the will of God. Would that the Lord bestow his spirit on all of us and that we act accordingly. Jesus shifts the focus of the disciples from who is on top, from who is in and who is out, to whether we live out of the Spirit that God has bestowed upon us. For a disciple of Jesus, no harm can come from anyone who does the will of God. Rather, the harm comes if disciples, that is you and me, fail to live out of the Spirit of God that we have received in baptism. To make this point, Jesus uses hyperbolic language. He was speaking in a way that was certain to grab the attention of his disciples. If anything causes a disciple to act against the will of God or to lead another astray, it would be better for that disciple to cut it off 
even if it is a hand or a foot or an eye. Jesus was not speaking literally. Thanks be to God. If he was, then all of his followers, except for his mother Mary, would have been missing a hand or a foot or an eye. Rather, Jesus is using strong language to focus on the importance of what is at stake. Do not worry about what others are doing. Worry about what you are doing. To paraphrase Uncle Ben, who memorably told Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. With the gift of the Spirit comes the obligation to use it. Would that the Lord bestow his Spirit on us all, but woe to us if we fail to act accordingly. In our second reading from the letter of St. James, we hear a practical example of failing to live out of the spirit we have received. In interpreting any of the epistles, it's important to remember that they were addressed primarily to those who were members of the Christian community. So those who are being addressed here are people who have received the spirit, but who have become distracted by other things. Those who focus solely on amassing material possessions and who take advantage of their workers are in for a rude awakening. Although James uses the example of money, his point extends to anything that distracts us from living a life that is worthy of those who have received the Spirit of the Lord. Would that the Lord bestow his Spirit on all. As we gather today, we celebrate that each of us have received the Spirit of God through baptism. We would do well to recall that at our baptism we were also anointed a prophet, that is, someone who has a duty to encourage others to follow God. Like Eldad and Medad, we are grateful that God's Spirit has continued to flow and to be effective in our lives even when we have been unable to take part in Mass or the other sacraments due to the pandemic. We regret those times when we have failed to live prophetic and spirit-filled lives. We pray for healing and forgiveness when we allow greed, lust, pride, prejudice, fear, or any other thing to distract us from what God is calling us to do. And we pray that God will continue to enlighten our hearts and our minds, that we may truly live out of the spirit we have received. Would that the Lord continue to bestow his spirit on us all.